I'll tell you what, I've been in this game, uh, I always say a long time, but I look around me in the paddock and, and whatnot, and I see <clears throat> a lot of people that have been in the game as long or longer than I have. And this game is a, is a great game. I love it. Always have, since I was old enough to understand what was going on on the racetrack, I've always loved horse racing. And, you know, we always talk about um, how there's ups and downs, right? How you have those peaks and valleys and how um, the peaks seem to drag you out of the valleys. And um, over the last five years since we've had the stable, we've had horses that got injured. You guys know that. And it's always hard. It's always really hard, especially this time of year. You know, the anticipation of what's about to take place, what could be, what might be. It's just so strong. Even in me, I've been around for so for a long time. And I understand it doesn't... I say this all the time. You guys get it, but it, you get it more as the years go on. It really doesn't matter how good our horses train. It's how good everybody else's are. So you're always trying to survey other farms, other trainers. You know, I find myself even now asking the vet sometimes, hey... Any good Philly trotters around here? Any good Philly trotters around? Trotting colts around? How much they've been? You know, I talk to friends of mine that work for trainers or trainers themselves. Hey, how much have you been with your horses? How do they seem? What do you like? You know, how are these ones? Because you, you just, you always want to know, right? You always want to know how good they could be, how good they are. And then you get to the track and sometimes your heart get bro gets broke and other times you just feel like you're on top of the world and today uh, was all that every baby qualifying day is every stake race every overnight race every fair race you're always trying to quantify how good my horse or how good my horse is compared to everybody else's and there's just that that build up of excitement is is so strong that it's that's why we do this that's what we love that next win, that next good training trip, that next good video. I was so anticipating so many horses qualifying and, you know, aside from Wednesday, just the whole day, just, it wasn't that the horses even raced bad. It was just a, just bad luck all day, right? And you know what I'm talking about. The one my heart Hanover with no hobbles on and then Path of Totality second trip with belly hobbles on, broken hobbles on That's My Girl. You just especially the way Thursday, Friday went, take that day and just crumple it up and throw it away. It didn't happen. Thursday was so good. The Ohio horses, I was so excited. Of Tom, Voyage of Ice and Fire, and then Purple Aura came out and qualified the way she did. Just so excited. The horses Friday at Mohawk looked great. Quietly. I was waiting to see one horse in particular qualify, and that was Miss Mildred. And just something about her. You know, you can never tell. Uh, and, and I don't like using names from the past. You guys know who I'm talking about. You've seen this speech or you've heard me talk about horses that are so fast. You don't know how durable they are. You don't know how tough they are. You don't know how overall fast they are. You don't know. But you want to see the indicators, right? You want to see the horse finish up strong with the bit in their mouth. I was so waiting to see this filly go today. And then James ducked her to the inside around the last round. She was quiet before, and she was so hot in the past. I remember days when she was hot. She was quiet today, but you can tell the videos from afar, but it just seemed like she she was ready to explode. You know, James kept her quiet around the last turn, ducked her to the inside, and it looks like she was just going to explode past them. I talked to him after, and he said she was just... She hadn't even hit fourth gear yet. She was just going to inhale them. He said, Shh, she, nice filly. And I'm speaking about her in past tense because in the blink of an eye, and this is how fragile this game is, in the blink of an eye, we lost a filly today. She didn't die. She chopped her tendon off, though, and she'll never race. She'll never see a harness again. At least if she does, it will be for a very, very long time. And I knew it. I knew it as soon as she put that step in. I knew 
something bad had happened, and then they showed the video, and you could see James grab her quick after the race and pull her up. I'm thinking, did she break her knee? Maybe she grabbed a shoe. Maybe she hit her knee. Maybe she's fine. But I knew. So I, I called James. No answer, of course. I knew he wouldn't be there. Texted Johnny. I said, is it bad? It was. He said, yeah, she cut, cut her tendon. Soft tissue damage on a, on a young horse. Forget the season. It's over. Her season was over halfway down the lane in her first ever qualifier. Had to rush her to the University of Guelph. I spoke to the veterinarian. She said, your trailer is just pulling up. I said, I'm going on the track to train a horse. I know it's bad. Take your time. Just tell me how bad. Call back, said, deep flexor tendon is fine, but the superior tendon, tendon on the back, sliced. Prognosis is guarded. Let your optimistic vet speak for she's done. So now I got to make phone calls. I, I'm not even sure who my partners are. I know that I know the people at Brighter, Schaefer Firms. I know I got to call them. I had to go on the site to see who else owned her with. I knew that one of my partners was Andy, who, who just bought into her not that long ago, maybe a month ago. I had to see who all my partners were on the Philly. I still own 20 or 25% of her. I had to make the call. And I'll tell you what. That is the toughest, right? The toughest call to call somebody. No, she didn't hurt herself. To tell them that she's never going to race. These are people that probably stopped what they were doing in the middle of the day to gather around the TV and watch this Philly qualify in another country. Super excited about how I've been talking about her about how she's been training on the videos. They already knew. You know, probably one of the nicest people I ever met, Mr. Schaefer, I called him and I said, you know, we start talking about the Philly. He says, you know, I've been in this game a long time and sometimes I have to tell people that their foals have died. He says, not quite the same, but you don't have to tell me. You got to take the ups with the downs. He said, so why don't we just stitch her up and breed her next year? Just like that. I was, I'm not the type of person, I'll boil over, but I'm not the type of person to throw my phone against a wall or completely lose my mind in, in public. I'm not that person. I might scream, I might curse a little bit, but I'm not that guy that people tell the stories about the next day, right? About how he boiled over, threw his phone, kicked the garbage can, you know, flipped out. I was as close as I've ever been as close as I've ever been to throwing my phone against the wall. I knew. As soon as, as soon as she heard, as soon as she made the break, I knew it was it. I knew. I knew. And to hear uh, Mr. Schaefer say that was, you know, I say we the nicest clients. We absolutely do have the nicest clients on earth. I spoke to the other gentleman. He says, well, if she didn't make it on the track, maybe she'll make it as a mama. I'm losing my mind. And, and these people that have invested their money too. Mr. Schaefer, the Schaefer, the Schaefer family bred this mare. They kept her for a year and then sent her to us. Watched her train down, only to hear me say, "She chopped her tendon off." Johnny's almost in tears. He's heartbroken over it. Caretaker Colt loved this filly to death, you know, and they want to blame themselves. It's nobody's fault. Be no different than I walked out of this car, went to go to the paddock, and a loose horse hit me and put me in a coma. It's just one of those things. Now, I'm making this video because I've had a ton of people ask about her. I'm making this video because I don't want to talk about it in such an optimistic time. It's pretty hard for me to be optimistic about everybody and then switch gears in the middle of my videos and say, too bad about Miss Mildred. I am absolutely heartbroken over this filly getting injured. There's just nothing you can do about it. And that is how fragile this game is doesn't get much lower but um, thankfully as I said we have the greatest clients on earth and Miss Mildred will have the best care we'll suture that uh, tendon up best we can anyway uh, let it heal and she'll be uh, she'll be a broodmare next year decently bred mare I know that uh, the good horse 
Shambhala's in the second dam, which would be her third dam, on a theoretical program page. So, I know how fast she was. Here's a filly that you go back and watch the video, if you can, because it makes me sick. But you go back and watch the video, and you watch where she hit her tendon. You can see it. You can see where she gets out of gear, hits her tendon. Still goes mile and two one comes twenty nine and one. James said she was gonna call. She was gonna finish up twenty seven and two with a bow in her neck and inhale them. So clearly she's got speed. Maybe your offspring will. Anyway, I don't want to talk any more about it. As I said, I'm heartbroken. Here at the track, I'm gonna do a little racing and then get the rest of my videos done. So I hope everybody is having a good day. I don't want to. Let that put a damper on it. It happens. As I said, thank God we have the clients we do because I know how upset I was. So take care. I will talk to you all very, very soon.